What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live composing show. My name is Stephen Malin, and I'm so glad you're here joining us today. Now, normally on this show, we focus mostly on writing music for video games. However, today we're changing up the script ever so slightly because I'm going to be working on some sound design. So actually creating sound effects for a video game. Now, I like to think of sound design kind of like... Let's imagine we're going grocery shopping and you're a game developer, right? And when you go shopping for music, chances are you also need sound effects. You need sound design. So, you know, if you're going to the grocery store and you need peanut butter, chances are you're going to buy the jelly too. And it's right beside it in that grocery aisle. So what that means for us as composers is there's plenty of work out there. If you just want to be a composer, you're going to do just fine. However, if you also pick up the skill set of sound design, your job opportunities are not only going to multiply by two, they're going to multiply by like 10. Because here's what I've learned being in the game industry for quite some time now. Sheesh, it's been like 20 years. Oh my gosh, 15, 16 years. I don't even know how many. I guess my first game was Worm Run in 2006-ish. So, okay, fine, 15 years. 16, I don't even, I can't do math. Um, I'm a musician. I can only count to nine um, or 12, I suppose, if 12, eight. <laughs> uh, but the cool thing about game audio is you never know how you're gonna get, going to get a job. And that's one of the things I talk about on this show a lot and in my courses and in our um, Video Game Music Alliance community. We talk a lot about getting work in the game audio field. And you just never know who is going to be the person that hands you the job. And wouldn't it be really cool if you had a skill set that's similar in the, in the world of sound design that if someone hires you for music, they can also hire you for sound effects. Or if they hire you for sound effects, they find out you're a composer, you can do the music too. And it's pretty crazy how it circulates like that. And so you can get a whole lot more work this way. Um, and chances are, as a composer, even if you've never done sound design before, chances are you've worked in a DAW and you've worked with audio before and you understand the concepts of layering sounds. You understand the concepts of using plugins and effects and morphing sounds to reach the outcome. So it's a slightly different art form and there are certainly dedicated sound designers, but but I'm, what I'm learning right now, honestly, in my career is there's just more work than ever before and specifically in the indie developer space there are so many new games coming out every single year and developers are typically they're small teams of like two people three people five people and none of them are audio people and so they need sounds they need music and so that's where we come in and i hope more on this show i can i can dive more into the sound design world and show some of my techniques and i'm certainly still learning i i I don't even know if I call myself a professional sound designer. I, I'm a professional composer for sure. But, you know, what does professional mean? That you've been paid to do it? Okay, cool. Then I'm a professional sound designer. Um, I've worked on games for quite some time and I've done sounds for them too. So um, I hope through today we can just kind of talk about this concept and I can show some of my experience. But the first thing I want to do... Um, there's a few links down in the description below. I don't usually throw a bunch of links at you guys, but I have some resources for you. If you're interested in diving more into the game audio world, um, specifically with sound design, there's a few links down there you absolutely need to check out. The first one down there, um, let me actually pull open the, uh, actually I can't see it, but you can see it. Uh, the first <laughs> link down there, um, that's, that's if you specifically want to dive more into the game music world and you really want to learn how to actually make money, make a living doing this. And there's a very specific number there, $63,000 per year, since that is according to the game SoundCon annual survey. Um, that's the latest, um, survey results that on average composers who are, have a full-time living from this earn $63,000 per year. Um, and it breaks down all the stats and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, we have a group, uh, it's called the video game music Alliance. Um, it's actually going to be reopening soon. So if you want to jump on the wait list and be one of the first people to be notified about that, go check that out. There's a link there. You get a free document about um, my path for how I have a six-figure video game music business and how you can do the same thing. Um, and it is replicatable because it's, it's a series of steps, series of things we do to promote our work and to get our, our music marketed and to get ourselves out there and network and all those fun things. So there is a process behind this. The second link down there, 
is a link to an incredible sound resource that I'm going to be using today. Um, and it is from Sonus, which is a sample library provider. And uh, it's basically a storefront to where a bunch of other companies sell their sample libraries. And I was just turned on to this this past week and it blew my mind. It's over 150 gigabytes of free samples. These are um, uh, thousands of dollars worth of paid commercial sample packs that are real. You can go buy them from the stores today. Companies like Zero G, right? Like the real big guys that are like the titans of the industry. What they've done is every single year for Game Developers Conference, which is going on right now um, on the West Coast, right now, um, every single year they put out a new pack, Sonus does. And what they do is they've, they've they have these relationships with all these different companies. So all these different sound design companies have contributed two or three different packs from their libraries. And so every single year they've been accumulating these. So if you go to that website down there in the description, um, you can grab that and it's completely free. It is royalty free, which means you can use it in any commercial project on a real video game. You can get paid to use these. Now, be careful, don't just like literally grab one of them and use it in the game. That's kind of stupid and not unique and not interesting. You won't get hired again. Um, but we can use these as a sound bed, as a foundation to then build upon and mix together and layer, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Um, but check that out, it, it blew my mind. Um, I have sounds from over the years, but typically I go and record my own sounds or I go find sounds uh, through free resources, Google searches and stuff. But this is literally thousands of dollars worth of high quality, um, no nonsense type sounds that, that, that kind of span all, all of the types of video game sound you might want from like cars to sports, to magic, to swords and battles and, and screams and all the things that you would expect in, in this type of thing. So go grab that because it's free and it's amazing. So that's going to be an incredible starting point for most of you. If you've never used this kind of stuff, um, I think it's going to absolutely blow your mind. And uh, Travis in the chat. So Travis is one of my clients that I work with all the time on his stuff, Full and Scholar Productions. He is actually a sound designer. He's a phenomenal sound designer. And he just said in the chat, Sonus is amazing. Um, yeah, so I was actually telling him about it and he has already had these for years apparently. So um, yes, so he is a titan of the industry right there. So take his word for it. And thanks so much, Jacob, for the sub. <clears throat> Mario banging on the keys. Man, okay, so that's that's the second link. Link number three, I'm just like throwing all kinds of resources at you guys today. Um, link number three, I want you guys to watch this video. If you are interested in sound design whatsoever in the video game space, um, I have a recommendation. I wanna recommend Akash Thakar. Maybe you've heard of him. He is, uh, he's a fellow YouTuber. He puts out videos all the time about video game sound design specifically. My channel is more so geared towards music, obviously. But his content is phenomenal. He's a titan of the industry, um, Hyperlight Drifter, um, Destiny, all kinds of stuff. He's worked on a lot of indie games and AAA games, and so he's one of like he's one of my go-to guys to ask questions and search through his content. So he is a phenomenal resource for you guys. But specifically for today, that third link is just a five-minute video that he put out a few months ago, and I haven't ever been able to put this into words like he has. But I think it's a great resource for us talking about today because. He has this technique, this sound design technique or methodology that he calls the HMLS technique. And, and what that stands for is high, mid, low, special, or style. And what we're going to be going through today is as I make new sounds today, I'm going to be grabbing at all times. If I want to make a unique, interesting sound that feels full and rich, then I'm going to grab a high sound. I'm talking about frequency, right? High frequency, mid frequency, low frequency, and then a stylistic sound, something that's obscure, that's weird, that, that does not seem like it's gonna to fit. And what we do is we manipulate each of those four sounds as our bedrock for the sound. And then we can add more stuff as we want, but what it does is it gives us a very full, rich sound that is unique. And I, I hadn't been able to put that into words. That's something that I've done in the past, I just didn't, you know, it's, it's a simplification. Um, and I think it's really smart. So go listen to that uh, little talk. It's five minutes long and it sure beats my two hour video today. Right. Um, as far as your time goes. So if you get nothing else out of today, go check that out. I think that's going to be really valuable for anyone wanting to dive into sound design, because that is a brilliant way of going about it as a starting point. 
So um, let me give it some quick hellos, and we'll write some sound effects for today. Man, all kinds of people here today. We have Kelso, Chip, Jew, Marie, Taro, Adam, Sector7, Michael, um, Casil, Casper. Man, we're getting to a point where I might not be able to shout out to everybody. There's so many of you. Um, if Chu, Arfo, you guys are awesome. You're awesome. Sonus is awesome. Um, yeah, you guys are you guys are great. Uh, Royal, a um, bunch of others popping in here. So, man, let's have some fun today because um, we get to work on Monster Sanctuary. And any day I get to work on Monster Sanctuary in any capacity, I'm, I'm a very happy fellow. Um, so what I did in preparation for this today is um, one of the cool things about being a composer is obviously I make my own sounds. I make my own template. And that's what I have here. This is my actual session from all of the Monster Sanctuary soundtrack. So you'll see a bunch of obviously sample libraries, things like horns, right? Pianos, and a bunch of sample um, like synths that we built. I say we, me and Peter, built for this soundtrack. Right. So those are all the like the iconic sounds from Monster Sanctuary. So one of the benefits of being someone who does both music and sound is I can use the music template to transform into sound effects. Talk about making the world feel like synergetic and complete. Man, that's one of the best ways to do it. And it's not always possible to use these samples. Um, but even like right now, I have a clip from the game. And this is just me goofing around, but like this is not going to be a great sound effect, but Literally with just a sample library from the game soundtrack and a pitch bend wheel. Right, this is me giving like 1% effort right now. But you see, like right now in the clip we're about to score, one of the things I wanted to score today was teleporting. Um, so let me just like grab... I'm totally jumping ahead. Okay, so like for example, let's say we want to score this little moment here, which we're going to in just a few minutes, on this little teleportation, or warping between areas. And this is a Metroidvania, by the way, if you haven't played it. Um, I think Casper said that in the chat. I'm going to put more effort into this, but even just having the original palette of sounds i can morph it into things that already sound like the universe isn't that cool so check this out so like teleportation right how cool is that okay anyway case in point right like having access to the original sound sources is really helpful and I can convert those MIDI notes into audio files and then start to play around with them. Um, but anyway, I digress. So, man, it's going to be a lot of fun today because this is something I just don't get to talk about a lot. And I want to talk about it more here on this channel and the show. Um, and some of the context for today, um, I recently talked to the game devs of Monster Sanctuary. And they've already, obviously, they already have sound effects for the whole game. Uh, but most of them are stock sounds. Um they were not customized. I mean, they were slightly customized to better fit the context and whatever, but um, there were a few moments, there's, there's at least a handful of sound effects that I personally, just as a player, I would love for them to be custom. I'd love for them to be a little bit more um, customized to the experience and to the world instead of stock sounds. And so I had that conversation with the team and um, whether or not we end up replacing anything at this stage, because you know it's already released on all the major consoles and there's always a delay and updates and all that kind of stuff. So it may or may not happen, but regardless, my goal today is what if, what if it did happen, right? I mean, let's take a stream and let's make some sounds. And if they actually work and they're actually good, maybe we can replace it. And who knows, right? Um, I think it's okay to take chances and, and experiment a little bit. At the end of the day, we're all going to have fun doing it and it gets more reps for me. And at the end of the day, I could always use more reps in the sound space because I'm, I'm still newer at that. I have way less Let's say uh, if I've been writing game music for 15 years, it's probably more than that, 17 years, whatever. I've only been doing sound for games for maybe five years. So there's a big difference, right? I'm clearly more skilled at one than the other, but how do you get better at things? Well, you got to 
work on your skills. You got to do it more. So hopefully together, I'm, you know, I'm terrified to do this live in front of you because I'm just, I don't have as much experience with it, but let's fumble together. Let's have some fun. And I'll just kind of talk to my, my process, but I do want to use that HMLS technique today to show you how effective it is in such a simple way. So here's a, um, I grabbed two clips. And by the way, I I'm totally cheating right now. You'll notice that my monster right now beside me is, um, he's a new character from the DLC. So sorry, not sorry. So here's what I did. I grabbed two clips. The first clip I grabbed, I, tur I went to the options of the game and I turned off the sound effects. That way it's 100% music. Maybe if I want to, just to kind of throw out some ideas, I can't do a ton in two hours with you guys, but I can at least get maybe two sounds, three sounds created today. Um, it takes about 30 minutes to create a unique sound I've found in my workflow. Um, so let's just kind of look through some of the sounds we might experience. So the first one I see is obviously footsteps. We're walking, right? Ch -ch -ch -ch. And then um, when we have dialogue, currently there's no sound for this. And that makes me really sad. I think of games specifically like um, Animal Crossing or um, Celeste or Banjo-Kazooie, any of these games where you have like, like those types of like broken, choppy, cartoony English, that kind of thing. I think that would work really well. And it makes me sad that there's no sound effect at all for any of the text in the game. So maybe that's a spot. feels naked doesn't it and the music is actually from the game so whenever there's like a yes no command in the game there's like a little do 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 that moves which i'm happy with but here's a spot that i really want to focus on today it's whenever you teleport between locations the sound in the game so here's the second clip i took I did a second gameplay clip, which is just the sound effects, same same area, just sound effects. That way we can hear it. They, it already sounds like in the game without music. So here's some footsteps. It's like confirmation. See how silent it is? Oof, that's loud. I've never liked this sound effect. In fact, if I were to pick on one from the entire game that I absolutely don't like, it's this one. All right, cool. So we're in this next environment. Let me just kind of poke through what I have. So there's a sound when, obviously, when you're walking, when you land, like right there. And then whenever you enter a monster encounter, there's this kind of uh, entering battle sound. Which is pretty cool. I like the delay on it. But again, this feels so naked to me. Obviously, there's no music, but... There's a sound for when you use a smoke bomb to a retreat, which is another sound I really don't like. And then here's another... Another teleport. <laughs> yeah. And hey, what's up, David? And I think Chip jumped in. What's up? Yeah, so those are some of the sounds I'd like to change. Um, I also went through, as part of this music clip, and I entered a battle. Um, there are so many sounds. I think within this one battle, there's probably, you know, 20 sounds. But I intentionally took them out so we could just hear the music. So every move in the game... So like every poison move, every fire move, every ice move has its own unique sound, which is cool. And none of them are, are bad. But to me, as a, as a sound designer, to me, you know, I hear potential of what could be. To me, they're very one-dimensional, which is not bad. Um, they sound very, um, yeah, I think one-dimensional or two-dimensional is the best way of thinking about it. But I'd rather them be three-dimensional, so, so to speak, like cover more frequency range, do more interesting things isn't that funny audio is a hard thing to talk about because you know we, we all know what a whoosh sounds like but there's something unique and special whenever you can combine sounds and make something interesting it's like all of that right there that'd be a cool move to so aerial strike that'd be a really cool one to make 
like there's like five things you could do there. There's the this the slashing sound. Like there's so many cool. Basically, every time the monster gets hit, there should be something. There's another really cool one, an ultimate move called Cataclysm, where they all just get wrecked with statuses. So the animations are phenomenal. I absolutely love the visuals. I would just, as a gamer, I want the quality of the sound to match the visuals that we're seeing. As a player, multiple times there are, um, I find that most of the sound effects currently in the game are very high frequency. Naturally, you know, it's easier to hear high frequency sounds and they're a bit more potent, a little bit more in your face, but that's not always the sound you want. And it, they often come across as very annoying and it makes me not want to play battles. It's like that one, Spark Shower. That should, to me, that should be like some big flame. Not just one sound, but like a flurry of like some kind of big magical explosion thing. Like, I don't know, pennies dropping on a desk or something like something that's like toxic. So thankfully, there's beautiful visuals and, you know, I could go on. There's just so many different moves. There's no way we can possibly do all these in one sitting. But um, maybe one or two moves would be really fun to to try to make um, there's also the potential of making a monster death sound because when when a monster dies it currently makes this sound i don't know if i recorded it or not i don't think i did no i didn't but you get the idea so that's kind of what we're working with here today i just wanted to give you guys it's kind of a landscape um so let's make something i talked enough <laughs> stream's over i talked enough I haven't even done any work yet um but perhaps the first one to focus on would be that teleport. Cause I think if there's one sound to pick on, on the entire stinking game, it's that teleport that just drives me mad. And you teleport constantly in this game. It's the fast travel of the game. I'm playing a lot of Elden Ring right now. So just imagine you're playing Elden Ring and every time you warp to another site of grace, right? Like that you're going to do that thousands of times as you play the game. So it's a very important sound to get right. And if it's annoying, oof. So let me talk about um, how I'm going to set up my session to actually make this happen because I'm using a DAW session. I'm using Cubase. Um, here's all I'm going to do is I have my session set to samples. So down here, whenever you're in a DAW, you can choose between bars and beats, time, time code. I want to focus on samples because this way I can use my shortcut, my key command. Currently, I can uh, jump between bars. You see my cursor. It's going one, two, three, four. But what I want to do is use the plus. You can't see my hands. Hold up. Where's my keys? There we go. So on my keyboard over here, my number pad, I like to use the plus sign and the minus sign to move forward or backwards by one frame. That's super useful when you're doing any kind of film scoring. So here, if I push the plus sign, you see how it's literally just going forward one frame. Super helpful because we're doing 30 FPS, 30 frames per second. Um, so I'm going to find the exact moment and just for our clarity, I'm going to mute the music until we need it later. Oh my gosh, you guys are ridiculous. Of course you're ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I want to show you here. I'm going to find the exact moment that the teleport starts, which is right after the map. So boom, right there. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. Let me get my face out of the way so you can see everything. Um, what I'm going to do is just kind of go generally where we're at, and I'm going to hold down the plus sign until we get the exact frame. So this is what animators do. They have to find the exact frame to do stuff. So it looks like it actually starts, like the map minimizes. So the sound is going to start really when the map minimizes right there. So I'm going to create a marker. Um, this is going to be called teleport. And this marker lives up here at the top of my session. And I'm going to look down at the bottom to see exactly where my time code is, which is this right here. This is exactly where um, everything, the cursor currently is. So I'm going to create my looper bar, 9.2.1.64. Uh, 
and we're just gonna make it like three bars long, something like that. And now my looper bar is perfectly set to that animation. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So you see the, the gray bar. And now if I click the looper bar, it turns it into an actual loop and I can go to the beginning of my loop, hit space bar, and it's gonna play the full animation. And that's about where it stops, right there. So now I have the exact time code completely set. And I can, you know, make my sound for just that moment of time. And then it's going to keep looping like that. Now, because I'm a big fan of reverb and things and delays, you might want the sound to continue a little bit beyond the animation. And so I'm going to give a little bit of, of pause. Okay, so now we have our looper bar set. And now we're just going to have some fun, okay? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create... Um, find my first sound because what I want to do is use that H M L S strategy. I'm going to find four sounds without doing any kind of tweaking or, or effects or all the fun stuff. We just need the basic sounds, something to work with. I can make my own sound. I could pull from a, a resource, but let's just see what we have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if any of my current sample libraries from the game match the sound and maybe, maybe not. So what I'm looking for is, obviously our characters are like melting. So there, so in my mind, the pitch needs to go, like it needs to descend. And it also feels, you know, use your colors. Like white to me resembles high frequencies. It represents lightness. It represents um, something like a wind type sound, something that's uh, airy. Um, so I'm trying to think of, of my palette here. If maybe a flute would be the closest thing. See, that already feels wrong because it's not high enough. Ooh, what does that remind me of? Is that Zelda? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Uh, Super Mario World. Remember whenever you um, exit a castle? After you beat a castle in Super Mario World, Super Nintendo game, the uh, or the keyhole, that's what it is. Take your key to the keyhole and it goes, right? And like consumes you. That's what this reminds me of. That a lot so i'm gonna take like a, a fifth or a fourth something that's not overtly major or minor i'm gonna do like a little pitch bend because that just sounds interesting to me i'm gonna try to match it to the timing and so i'll probably give myself like a bar early and we'll just see what happens that's pretty cool right Cool, so let's have some fun. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render in place. I have a shortcut for that, Shift R. It's a bounce in place if you're in Logic. Tools. Um, erase the MIDI, I don't want it anymore. I'm gonna click and drag this down here. And I wanna make sure you guys actually see the workflow because this is interesting stuff, I think. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna create a new folder because it's a brand new sound. We're just gonna call it, uh, teleport I like to color code it just so I don't get all confused I'll make it gold and then we're anything from this point we're gonna just throw into that folder I'm trying to uncolor it there we go okay um, so I'm gonna call this H for high and we're just gonna call it flute warp because that's kind of what it sounds like to me um, I don't want to do too much editing yet, but I am going to at least start the sample on time. I'm going to do a fade in, and I'm going to take off a whole bunch of that tail and fade out. Let me turn the volume down a little bit, and let's see what it feels like. Not terrible. I do sense that it's starting a little too late. You see that right there? you got to be careful not to... Uh, cut the whole thing off. So I just need to make sure it starts right on time. A little bit of a fade in. 
that looks pretty good. And that's just one sound, right? It's one little sound. I'm gonna do way more. I'll call that my high end. Let's not manipulate it. Let's not do a bunch of crap yet. Let's try to knock off the H, M, L, and S. So the next thing I wanna do is actually go to my sound effect library. So this is the one I was raving about earlier. It's just right here, just a bunch, like thousands upon thousands of samples. Um, I don't have a robust library, but this is plenty. So I'm gonna use some search terms to try to figure out the mids and the, the, the lows. So let's look for wind. Wind feels like the right word. And here's all the different effects within this library that have anything to do with wind. And there's like a hundred. So now we can start auditioning. Some basic sounds. A lot of these are actual wind. I don't want actual wind. That's super cool. Let's use that. So now I can literally just grab this, drag it into Cubase. And if you are a Cubase user, I learned this the hard way recently that you have to make sure that you have a setting enabled within your preferences over here in edit preferences under editing audio. There's this beautiful little button that I think should always be checked. Convert to project settings and copy to project folder if needed. So what that does is it automatically converts if this was a 44.1 hertz or kilohertz um, track it will convert it to my current sample rate, which is uh, 48. So it just kind of prevents any kind of weird transforming of the sound. So this one, let's just call it medium for the M and we'll just call it wind whoosh. Let's turn it way down because that was loud. Let's find a good spot for it. And always look at the transients, meaning look at where the activity in the track is actually happening. So I'm gonna actually drag it to where all the good stuff is, do some kind of fade in, and just kind of, you know, shape it a little bit. Here it is. Okay, I can already sense that this is not, this is not a um, long, sorry, <laughs> had it on loop. Uh, this is not a, hello, stop yelling at me. It's not a long enough sound. So what we need is, I love this tool. I think um, Pro Tools and Cubase, if you select on the mouse tool, you can go to Sizing Applies Time Stretch. It's called TCE in Pro Tools. And literally all you do is you take the wave and you just stretch it to the exact length that you need and it'll automatically uh, warp the sound to fit. Okay, not terrible. A little too grainy for me. Let's solo it. Yeah, that really got grainy. Yikes. All right. So I'm gonna move it a little bit to like better fit. Okay, not terrible. I think with some reverb and stuff, we'll be able to really make that fit nicer. But again, I don't wanna get caught in the weeds until we have all the sounds we need. So now we need some kind of low sound. And to me, we need something that's gonna um, represent maybe like this peeling away sound of the characters like near something that's like descending. So let's go back over to my search field. Um, maybe you might call it a drop. Let's see what we got. Oh, you guys getting some delay. I don't know. That's no good. I like that one. That's pretty cool. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. There's just experimenting. So low sound, we're going to call it um, chip drop. Now I want to see what we can do.
Yeah, I have this on loop, so you're probably hearing it. All kinds of stuff. All right. Yeah, I don't know why it's, it's like looping like that. It could also be coming from my headphones. So the main thing about sound design is <laughs> there's no wrong answer. There's just better answers, right? Of course, making it fit timing-wise. So, so let me just solo it. Oh, weird. It is delayed for you guys. That's super weird. Hold up. That's not okay. I wonder if this thing's screwed up. Hold on. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> yeah. It's like my plug-in was all wonky. I like that sound. But it has to stop pretty much there. That's where all of the sounds need to stop. Yeah, I'm the only crazy one. There we go. I like that sound. Might actually be a little bit too early. You like that? How it, you know, it, it follows the... It looks good. It follows the disappearing of it all. Cool. Um, and now, again, I don't want to get too lost in the weeds here, so let's find something special. So maybe something unexpected that would look good in this um, arena might be just like, you know, something interesting, different. Maybe like vanishing. Let's see if there's any kind of search result for vanish or disappear. Here's one. <laughs> there's some jet sounds. Let's check it out. No clue. That's pretty cool. F16. <laughs> Explosion, though. But I like the graininess of it all. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, so let's take that. That'll be our special. So S is going to be um, Jet. It's called Jet. And I'm making sure all of these are inside my folder. That way, if I want to solo it or mute it or group it all together, I can pretty easily. Um, so let's find a good moment within that track. Kind of makes that sound sound cool. I don't want the loudest part, but somewhere in here looks good to me. Now, I want to let this thing fade in, fade out to match. That looks good. Also has like a bit of electricity to it. And now the fun begins. And yes, this is my second cup of coffee right here. So now the, it's really going to begin. <laughs> Let's do it. This is really, I mean, anyone can do that part, you know, finding sounds and kind of putting them together. But really the art form here is really trying to grasp what's happening in the visual and, and the style and um, manipulating the sounds. This is the, really the fun part for me. So let's get cracking. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solo each sound and try to get it to represent the characteristic that I want with some effects on top. So it's usually EQ, reverb, maybe some frequency shifting, pitch shifting, delay, anything like that to help morph the sound into the exact character I want. And then the step two is to combine them together and kind of massage it to until it really feels right. So let's do that one at a time. Um, 
And that's just what it takes. So here we go. Flute warp. Here we go. Boom. It still feels like off on the timing. Maybe it just needs a longer fade. I like the delay on it though, and that we got to use an instrument, but this really needs some help in the mixing department. So um, I'm gonna start throwing on some effects. You ready? Let's start with, oh man, let's start with EQ to really get it in the right spot. Oops, let me turn my looper on. Um, there we go. It's a better. Let's do try pitch shifting it around a little bit. That's pretty cool. And I like this tool a lot by AGM Music because first of all, it's free. Pitch proof allows you to do this really cool blend knob. So it's not just a pitch shifter, it's a percentage of a pitch blend. So I can keep it like at 50% and it's gonna keep the original pitch plus whatever I add on top of it. Check that out. Now it actually has like an atonal vibe. That's cool. That's totally the right sound to me, to my ears. Now let's keep playing with uh, EQ. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe the last thing it needs is a tad of reverb. Whoa, what a difference that makes. Check that out. This one's actually a reverse reverb. How cool is that? So notice it goes to it actually like brings in the reverb, which is kind of cool for magic. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. What do you guys think? It has a lot of character. And I love that, that it's coming from one of the instruments from the soundtrack. But that's, that, that by itself is not enough. Like we need some kind of real world realism that's where these big whooshes and and wind will help. So there's the the high. So let's focus on the mids. What is going on? Oh, I'm on the wrong track. Sorry. This one. Okay, back to the wind. Really focus on the mids. There it is.
Now, one of the things I talked about earlier is this sound is not long enough, but I don't want to screw around too much with like the original sound. So let's play around with some reverb. I like that this one like gives like a little uh, kickback. Isn't that cool? It goes like a little extra. Which helps with like the dissipation of the sound. I should say the dissipation of the visual. It's like a second little breath. That's pretty cool. I, I'm happy with that so far. Now let's go to the next sound. The chip drop. This one needs some work. Um, let's really get this sucker to be a low sound instead of so much in the mids. And there's really no right or wrong way to EQ. Just find the sound you need. Make it magical. So this might actually benefit from um, Shimmer, which is a chorus reverb. This might get overkill, but let's just try it. It helps because it has like a little bit of a tail. Um, but I'm going to start this differently. I'm going to start with the shimmer first, change the order. That way it has something to do and then I can EQ it. But it still needs some kind of sparkle. So let's, let's uh, play around. Let me turn off the EQ and uh, maybe distortion, a bit crusher might do the trick, or a tube saturator, something in that realm. I need some crunchiness. Start crushing it. There, I like that because the artifacts, you hear it? How now the bass is dropping, but there's like these subtle um, artifacts on top that go up. They go more. Let me find the sweet spot. So that sounds like a better plan. Then we can EQ it to fix it. All right. Now let's move to the next sound. Take it or leave it. Jet. Here we go. I like the crackliness of it. But let's tame it. Now let's uh, let's play with the frequency shift. Actually, frequency shifting is a really fun technique too. So you don't screw around the transient; you just play with how it's filtered. A bit more warbliness. That's cool. All right, so let's do a uh, one by one just to review what we have so far of this sound. You can visually see it. We can look at it together. Here we go. I'll just go from high to S. All 
All right, now the moment of truth. Gulp. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play it a few times. I'm going to start uh, messing with the timing a little bit to sweeten it up. It's like 60% there. It's not ready. So now we have to work on gluing the whole sound together because right now it still feels like a bunch of different things. So the goal here is to try to find some way to gel it. Okay, so here's a few things I can try. First of all, I want to take this uh, flute warp. I'll start playing around with timings. That's where this uh, stretch tool is so helpful. Let me shrink it. It's really fit the timing. That's better. Cool. And what I wanna do is I wanna make two of these layers. I'm gonna do a high flute warp. I'm literally gonna copy this and make a low one too. I feel like this this is a cool sound, and I also want to make like a low version of it. In order to do that, I'm going to grab this time stretching. I'm going to be ridiculous. I'm going to turn off the uh, all the effects real quick. Let's experiment with some pitch shifting. Making it way lower. I think it could benefit from like crazy low. favorite I like combining those it's pretty cool all right let's keep combining i told you it takes about 30 minutes to make one of these suckers because there's just there's a lot of elements to it might even experiment with some panning Ooh, 
Look at that. When I put the uh, bit crusher on the whoosh sound, look what it did to it. That's cool. That's so appropriate. It's like dissolving distortion. How cool is that? Oh, I like that. That is like Final Fantasy, like casting Ultima. And it's so cool. It has that bit crush sound. Now I just need to open up the filter a little bit. That fits really well. Cool. Let's play with the pitch on the chip drop. Let's see what else we can get out of this. Yeah, I like it even lower. That sounds so magical. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get this jet. <laughs> Let's find his place. <laughs> oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. There we go. I like the crackliness. All right, let's mix the levels. Makes the levels a little bit better. Pretty good. All right, now for the final little smoldering. Final little thing I like to do is uh, just re like bounce that little part. Uh, let me make sure it has like a little bit, a little bit of a re re reverb tail. We're just gonna call that uh, teleport pre mix. I'm going to pop that into a folder. I like to have a folder called assets. That way nothing gets lost. I'm just going to export that WAV file real quick. And then, um, now that I've, you know, played with all those, I don't want to remove them, but I am going to X them out. That way I don't accidentally keep them in the session. And then we're going to just pop in the final Right here. And that teleport is going to represent the final, and I can do whatever final um, elements I need to really line up to picture. And if I need any final effects. So I am going to see what a bit crusher feels like on top of it. from the original and see if we can mix it in a little bit. Silly. I don't know where it comes from. All right, let's see if any of this actually works, huh?
That sounds like a um, <laughs> like an elephant screech. This is one of those situations where maybe we we had to simplify a little bit, take out some layers. So let's just experiment what it sounds like with maybe like four layers. I like that right there, that combo. That has a lot of power behind it. And it's such an interesting moment and in sound. So let me uh, pop those up a little bit. Right? It's one of those things that I could always even take the final sound. Check this out. If I take all those final sounds and then just pitch it up, that alone could solve some of the clashy issues. It's all about experimenting. So let me take that final sound and just crank it up a little bit here. I don't like with the pitch shifter, but there you go. There's an idea. One idea for today. I feel like the, uh, the jet actually hurts more than it helps. But I do like having the others. I think that's my favorite. You guys like that one? The only thing I might drop is the bass. I think everything else is really solid. Cool. Let me export that final. That's my favorite right there. Let's call it. I'll turn off the music. Hey, this is a family friendly show. Thanks for being here. All right, I'm gonna pop out. Teleport. I like it. So out of context, here's what that final sounds like. There's the final deliverable. I like it. Yeah, I mean, the, the devs could always decrease the volume to whatever they want. But what I've learned with game engines is um, they can't increase the volume. They can only decrease. So I always give things at like zero or, you know, negative 0.1 dB, something pretty loud and, and big. And they can always add effects or whatever. But in general... <laughs> Taro. Yeah, we gotta, gotta keep this place a happy place for all. All right, um, let's do another sound effect. So, yeah, that one took about 40 minutes, but that's okay. That's pretty typical with this kind of stuff. Um, you guys wanna do like a spell? Wouldn't that be fun? That sounds like a lot of fun to me. I know it's gonna be short because these are so fast. Um, but I just imagine something like this. Let's look through some of the moves. It's like slime folly. That's a good one. I use all the time. But that one, look how many hits it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like you have to like eight different sounds for that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh, 
I like that one. That one's that's a lot of work right there. Look at all the different sounds involved. The cataclysm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which effect should I do, guys? Just kind of as a test. I like a lot of these moves. Look at look how cool that one is. Sustained heal. A lot of these have multiple hits, though, so you really have to get creative with the hits. Aerial Strike is a really cool one, but it has like seven hits. I want to do something a little bit simpler. Poison Bomb. One, two, three. But even Poison Bomb, check that out. There's like a slashing of the sword every time it hits. Goodness gracious. And the team has done a really good job of choosing simple sounds that really do blend well together. I'm trying to think of what would be a good one. Because a lot of these hit so many times. Someone in the chat earlier said they want to do like an ice sound effect. There's also, you know, when you beat a battle, you have all the different stars. Um, there's the experience sound. There's a lot of sounds. There's the hatching of an egg. That one's kind of cool. You want to do that one? The egg? You know, let's do that one. I think the battle ones are fun, but this is like a more iconic sound that would actually be used potentially. Because right now it's kind of a very simple sound. So let's do that. Unless you guys have any qualms. Um, so I'm going to do egg hatch. Sounds like fun. So let's find the exact moment it starts. So it should be right after you hit the OK button. Boom, right there. It's going to be where it starts. And look at my, look at my time code. 941488. There we are. So let's look, let's kind of dissect what's happening in the in the picture. So we have the egg is getting large, or I guess it's preparing to hatch. So some kind of like whoosh sound of whoosh, right? There needs to be like a, like a glass breaking type of sound where it actually opens up and it reveals. So it's really only like two sounds. I don't know if I want to do like a musical moment or not, but so let me find that moment where it hits. I don't know. It's kind of a slow animation. So I think as long as we see the white coming off, which is right. There, it's like the burst moment. So to me, there needs to be two moments. There needs to be the um, like the rise, some kind of cracking sound. So maybe we can start with the crack of the egg. That'd be fun. Um, so let me tuck away my last little project here at the bottom and we'll move on to another one. Maybe we'll just do two today. That sounds like fun. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, I feel like we need to start with that cracking of the egg. So here's a kick drum I use for the whole soundtrack. What is this delay, man? I'm hearing it too. It's really weird. There we go. I like the news, like at the bottom of the, the, the cracking of the egg. I like having the kick drum. That'd be cool. It's too simple. But it's one of the sounds from the game, so why not? Okay, so we're going to take that little kick drum. We're going to move it down here.
Let the games begin. All right, so this is going to be, it's like a mid sound. Kick, let's make a new folder just for that sound. And that's called um, Egg Hatch. And we'll just make Mr. Eggy blue today. Let's make him the same color. Cool. Uh, then we can get rid of that MIDI file. We don't need that anymore. Let's line it up. <laughs> it looks cool. Because there is like a moment of impact that needs to happen. Right? Right here. Let's find it. So to me, it's exactly when the character appears. I guess there. It's all a giant fade, so it's kind of hard to tell. We'll leave it at that for now. All right, so that's our first sound. Now let's go into our library. Let's find, let's be simple for a moment. Let's find an egg crack. Wow, I actually found one. That's pretty cool. What a perfect sound. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right, so that is a, that's a high sound. I'm gonna say sizzle. Eh, 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 it's like an egg crack, to be honest. It's an egg crack sizzle. Which is what you expect. You gotta start with the expectations and then kind of add on top of that, right? All right, so the egg break. That's so perfect for like this moment here. Guys, what is happening? There we go. Right, it's gonna be a very short little egg sound. <laughs> I like that. Because there's a bit of a fade, it needs to like. Sanity, I'm gonna move this here. Cool. Again, I'm not gonna mess around with the sound until I hit up all the major things. So maybe a low sound would be, uh, I'm gonna look up sizzle. super cool and that's unexpected I'm gonna keep that sound I'm gonna call that um, magnetized my special sound but back over here let's find the sizzle loud interesting so it's like water in a pan kind of thing yeah I don't know why there's like weird delays today um, I'm gonna call this sizzle Really like this uh, magnetized sound. The heck? There. That'd be 
cool for the intro. Like for the the intro piece. type sound. <laughs> yeah, you guys are straight up cooking with me. Oh, awesome. We're doing it. Making this happen. <laughs> so far, cooking sounds, yeah. Could add more sounds. I feel like there needs to be some kind of like maybe like a, like a ghost type laughing. Look up laughter. Let's see what in the world we get. <laughs> oh Lord. All right, anyway. Now, why did I pick weird laughs? Well, it's like a dolphin laugh. I feel like this could be really cool if we start manipulating it. I want to play with it for a minute. For starters. That could be cool if we manipulate. Um, let's start with pitch. It's usually a good place to start. Not always, but. Now let's also stretch it. Yeah, to answer the question from, from earlier, um, Carmen, take out the first five minutes of the video today, and you'll see some resources. like it might just be too weird I don't know <laughs> let's find is it a laugh let's find like a sparkle like chimes Grab a few of these. Uh, 
uh, maybe even like no 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 Put some smiles on your faces today. Stretching. Hey, what's up, David? Thanks. All right, let's play around with some of these. Uh, these are kind of special sounds. We call it Zap One and Zap Two. I'd love to. Play around a little bit with these. Let's start with reverb. Since we're kind of all over the place right now. What I did here was I did one with a reverb and one with a reversed reverb. That way they kind of shoot off each other. One is um, panned left and one is panned right. So it just kind of a little bit more character. Let me turn those down a little bit since they're kind of after thought items. And this is not complete at all, but here's everything so far. Uh, kick where it lives. Getting there. It's hard to figure out where the kick goes. Let's play with the kick. granular here kind of all over the place all right so the kick it's a little bit harder with a longer sound because you have to hear it a million times but i want to get the let's clean this up a little bit 
So here's where the second sound starts. That's where I need to be focused on. There we go. Now I can focus. There we go. Okay, now let's add some other ideas. Let's do the egg crack. This one needs some help. All right, let's morph this sound. Ooh, I like that. Little time. Terrible. Let's add the zaps. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right, I also want to add like a um, some kind of like low synth or something. It might work. It might not. But maybe. Something like this. so much arfo this is <laughs> this is terrifying for me I don't, I don't feel like i'm super good at this but it's that's just imposter syndrome straight up it's all about just more reps more reps more reps more reps do it more get better at it right that's how it goes all right so this is i call this low eh, it's like a mid synth cello Let's get this guy situated. And let's see how we can sneak that cool sound in there. That bendy bend. It's a cool pitch bend. Currently way too loud. That's a cool addition. Pick it up. Oh. 
that makes you want to hatch an egg, right? It's so much more interesting than like <laughs> whatever the current sound is. It's kind of like this really cool. The thing is, there's like a, a five to ten second pause while you name your character anyway, so you could do this over and over again. It wouldn't really get old. Now this might be too long. Let me figure out the fade. I like it. Now let me play with it ever so slightly. Adding, I don't know, something. Let's see what a frequency shifter feels like. Usually does wackadoodle things. What the heck was that? That's awesome. Okay, that just looks so much cool. Oh no, the delay of death is back. Lord have mercy. Thanks for letting me know, David, because I don't know when that happens. I think it's this plug-in right here. Something's going on. But every time I restart it, it seems to be fine. That's a cool sound. I might just need some reverb. Alright, let me tame down these zaps. Now that they're like really in our face, I really want to tame them down. Pretty cool though. Alright. The sound's not even completely done yet. We haven't created the whoosh. So I'll have to add some kind of whoosh here in a second. But here's what we have so far with the little magnetized type sound. You like it? Pretty cool. I know it's a little sci-fi, but like this game's full of magic, and I feel like they're like we're opening up a dark shifted polter uh, polterofen, right? Should be something in there. Ooh, that might be kind of cool. To do like a delayed. Like that. I'm not trying to make it musical necessarily, but sometimes it's kind of cool. Reminds me of like the Xbox. PlayStation logo. Some kind of sparkly thing. I'll call it sparkly. So let me focus on that for just a moment. Make something fun out of that. But first, we can put some uh, delay on there. 
stereo delay. Maybe like 16th notes. Wait, what? I'm so confused. Oh, these two are not in the... There we go. So confused. How about now? Um, so what do you do when you hit solo and nothing works? <laughs> nothing is soloed. Like literally nothing is soloed. I'm so confused. Come on, dang plugin. Do your job. Maybe it's soloed for you guys. It's never messed up on me like this. Do you see that, guys? Like, literally everything's muted and nothing is muted. Very bizarre. Lamb spiders. Let me uh, reopen my session. Can we do that? Can we like take a one minute break? Don't go anywhere. Oh, kitty do kitty. Welcome back, everybody. I've had some weird tech glitches today. Like, weird stuff that's never, ever happened before. So, there's that. Um, Let's see if this works now. If I hit the solo button, if it's actually going to solo. No, it's like buggy. Um, Not really sure what to do. If solo doesn't work... What is the meaning of life? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's like, if you can't trust the basics, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Look, if I hit mute, let's see what happens. It still plays all the sounds. Oh, wait. Ah, I get it now. I get it. Somewhere I automated. Hold up. The heck? <laughs> I can't even finish this. Oh my gosh, what's going on? 
Okay, I thought I cracked the code. I thought I cracked the egg. I thought we were gonna have more cooking class together. Guys, what do you do? Okay, look, it works right this second, but... It... I figured it out. I freaking figured it out. Guys, I figured it out. Remember that time when I did the bounce in place? I did not solo the square synth. I, like a moron, bounced everything. So this whole time, I've been absolutely dumbfounded because I recorded everything. Smack, smack, smack. Okay, cool. Well, now, now we know. Ah, heavens to Betsy and a half. All right. <laughs> Good night. What is happening? That was not a tech glitch. That was a user error in its finest. I, I like this sound a lot, so let's record it again. <laughs> oh my God, that was stupid. Um, I think I should do less of those. God, I feel like an idiot. Cool. I can crack an egg with one hand up, by the way. Thank you. I love eggs. I make lots of them. Um, okay, now that I feel less of an idiot, check it out. You have to hit solo and then render in place. Otherwise, it bounces everything. <laughs> So mad, but not really. Okay, cool. Crisis averted. That's all that matters, guys. This is... <laughs> okay, let me talk to some, some people right now. If you want to be a professional game audio person, you better get used to putting out fires. That's all we do. There's problems all the time. All the time. So you just gotta get used to it. There's gonna be tech glitches up the wazoo every single day. Sparkly seven, cool. That's now called sparkly seven. Apparently I can't type. So let's go over to sparkly seven. <laughs> what a great name. Um, <laughs> I wanna do stereo delay. I just, I'm done. You guys know right around the, right around the two hour mark, I start losing my mind during these streams. So this is where all the good stuff happens. So pay attention. It's about to get good. I like that. Cool. It's way too much of everything, but besides that, let's grab some Pro Q and let's make this thing sparkle. Set it. Sparkly seven. many repetitions so maybe I can go in here and do a little cross fade action yeah I like that covering up the footage, but whatever. That's fine. <laughs> such an extreme sound effect, but I like it. I want to do some crazy feedback. shift as well. Knock to fire if it doesn't completely break on me. we 
we go. There's the little sparkle I was going for. Check that out. When you do a quarter note, triplet, and an eighth note at the same time, it creates this really cool galloping effect. Put it in context, see if it even works. It may not. That's the thing with this stuff, you just gotta try. possibility right you can do it a million different ways but probably turn down the kick let me do like one one little pass of uh doing the mix level rights Day. So now, in order to export that, it's called Egg Hatch Version 1. Actually, I'm going to call it Egg. That's fine. Let's just call it as Egg Hatch Version 1. Here's the thing uh, the way this works, it's dance. Whenever you're working with a game development team, just like with music, it's pretty rare that the first version of anything is accepted right away. Um, the game devs like to take these sound effects, throw them into the game, play around with them, and see what works, what doesn't, if it works in different contexts, different music tracks, whatever. Um, and I think it's a cool way to, um, you know, they can come back to me and say, hey, can you get rid of like the low end or the buzz, or can you make it sound like, more like this, and just go do another iteration of it. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that sound. It's unique, right? Who else combines egg cracks, sizzles, magnets, synth cello, zaps, sparkly sevens, and egg hatches, right? All, all in one, and kick drums, all in one thing, right? It's, it's my own unique, crazy recipe, and it works. Um, so, I guess we're going to cut the party a little short today, but um, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. Something different. Um, sound design is a little bit meticulous. It's a little techy. It's a little... Um, it's a little boring at times, but there's something about it that is also very invigorating and, and fresh and creative, and there's a lot you can do with it. So it's kind of this giant, infinite pool of possibilities. But like I was talking about at the beginning of the stream, the, my process, which I'm totally ripping off from Akash the Car, because I love his work and I love the type of game audio he creates, and it's really big on this style of layering. And specifically, like he teaches in the video, check it out in the resources below in the details of the or description of the video. Um, he talks about high, medium, or high, mid, low, and a special layer. 
And by combining those four things, it just gives you a really unique edge. It allows you to have your own sonic thumbprint, even though we're using found sounds or we're using our own soundtrack sounds, whatever. And it just, it just allows you to make cool, interesting stuff. It doesn't mean all of it's going to be used. And the cops would be the first to tell you that, you know, probably 50% of what he makes is rejected. Because that's, that's the same thing with music. Some, so many of the tracks I've written for games have been rejected. And then I just repackage them later and use them in a, in a sound pack or a music pack later. Go sell it. Um, go make money off of it. You don't have to waste it. Just keep all of your demo stuff and all your rejected stuff in a folder somewhere. Um, that way you can go sell it and repackage it, repurpose it. So don't feel like anything you've made is a waste. So even if these sounds are never used by Monster Sanctuary, I can always pitch them for another game or probably the better choice is to just hold on to them and make a folder and go sell them on Unity, honestly. Um, there's plenty of people who would use this kind of stuff and it's very specialized, very interesting fantasy magic kind of stuff. So um, yeah, so let's go back and play before you finish up today. Let's play back. The, we only made two sounds today, but I also talked a lot and you know I can do it faster if I'm not, not talking so much, but I hope this was fun for you guys, a little taste of something different in this game audio space. So just a reminder, if you're a composer and you really want more gigs, learn some sound design because chances are if a game developer is looking for both a composer and a sound designer. So if you can do both, maybe you can have a package rate, a flat fee that combines both services. You're going to be a, it's going to be a win-win situation where you get to do all of the work. Maybe you can even hire on some help. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to produce better work that way, being cohesive and unified with your sound than hiring on a second person and having to go back and forth all the time. Anyway, just my take on it. Uh, yeah. So let's go back and listen. It's kind of funny because <coughs> excuse me, because these are like three second sounds, but it's still fun. <coughs> Part of me as I die over here. <coughs> so here's the first sound we made today. This is a... Um, teleport sound that's not what I wanted so my looper bar where was it oh yeah over here let's play it with music oh that's so good it sounds like a, it's like a dragon like a dragon um, dying or something <laughs> I don't know vanishing disappearing here it is without music. That's pretty cool with the bass. I'm liking that more than even before. I like that. Cool. keep that kick drum it's a little bit too much of an impact perhaps so it is without it. I can't tell which one I like better I definitely really like this one and the little sprinkle the sparky sound so there you go Folks, have yourselves a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy March. <laughs> All right, I've reached the end of my time. So thank you guys. Uh, not bad, not bad for two hours, knocking out two sound effects and semi-explaining my process. So um, I'll take a question real quick. Robin says, have you practiced a lot with sound design, Stephen? I feel like your sounds are really high level. Um, I struggle with that question because I would say no, no, I don't have a lot of sound design experience, but that's not true. It's just I have a tendency to compare everything in my life to music, like to writing and music. And if there's one thing I've done in my life more than anything else, literally tens of thousands of hours, um, I don't even know what the math is, but I've literally been writing commercial music for 17 years. So that just means countless hours of 
playing music and writing music and thinking about music and studying music and reading music and, and playing music. It's just like, um, that is something that I've, I've held myself to such a high bar in my life that Merry Christmas to you, Tara. Oh. <laughs> That when I compare it to sound design, which I have about five years experience in the game audio space, I feel like a baby, you know, five versus 17 is just no comparison. So if you ask me, yeah, I feel like a baby in it, but, um, that's okay. I'm, but you know, to a day one beginner, of course it looks like I'm experienced. So, but I'm always learning new things and, and studying and, and I feel like I'm finally at the place where I can at least produce to the same or close to the same quality as the music in, in games. So hopefully I'm closer than I was, which is all any of us can ever ask for. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> Christmas special. All right, friends, you guys have a fantastic day. And if you are players of Monster Sanctuary, um, the new DS DLC, Forgotten World shall be released soon i just played it all it's a lot of fun that's why my character is a dragon um yeah so it's gonna be fun new music i don't know if there's any new sounds i guess there's new sounds um i didn't make them but anyway um now i'm just rambling so you guys